Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm back at it. I've got another ridiculous stack of super budget pedals here that I'm going to shoot out to figure out which one deserves a spot <laughs> on the affordable board. There's seven spaces on the affordable board. One of these pedals might kick off one of the other pedals. These are all reverb pedals, by the way. Five cheapish reverb pedals. I'm hoping to kick off the analog chorus, the K-Mize chorus, because there's some uh, chorus sounds on that Akuz, Achuz delay I chose from the delay video. And I don't really use chorus that much, so I'd much rather have a nice reverb on here. So anyways, what have I got? Let's start unboxing these things. First one, I, by the way, I had to go more expensive uh, with the previous pedals. I was shooting in between 20 and 30 bucks. It's really hard to find reverb pedals that are under 30 bucks. So some of these creep over that. Like this one right here was 33 bucks. This is the Spring Reverb by, it doesn't say on the box who made it. Most guy, the most guy spring reverb. I like the looks of it. It's kind of pinkish purple. This brand won the delay. Moo gig. This is the reverb. Erg reverberg. <laughs> Always an interesting name from Moo gig. This one was twenty two dollars. That's an affordable one. Uh, the Azore. This one is $22 as well. So we have a couple $20 ones, which is nice. Comes with a little nine volt clippy that I will not use. This one's brown. So 22, 22. T-Cube series pedal. This one is $33 from EC. Eno stomp boxes. This one looks kind of fancy because it has different models, room, spring, and well. You know, that well reverb that everyone is always talking about. All right, last one, a K-Line. This one, someone texted me. Uh, Marlo, I think your name is Marlo, messaged me on Facebook. It's like, you've got to get this. Is the K line snake bite six knobs? How much is this? It's 38 bucks. This is the most expensive of the bunch, but I mean, six knobs for just under 40 bucks. I had to check it out. So I went a little bit of fancy pants. I spent a little bit, bit of extra money, guys. Sue me. <laughs> uh, all of these, by the way, were bought with money from the Patreons. Um, I am starting to hunt down contacts with brands to see if they can just provide their full lines to me. I was able to contact Azor and they have some stuff headed my way. Um, I think I've got some stuff coming from K-Line and I've even been talking to Sweetwater about providing some Behringer pedals. So I'm taking a little bit of the financial burden off of the Patreon account but I'm gonna cover all this stuff exactly the same way. It's gonna be a shootout to figure out which ones I like the best. All right, let's wire these all up and get started. By the way, I'm gonna be using these Hosa plugs that I love. I love these super flat pancake plugs and they happen to be one of the cheapest plugs out there. How should I order this? I think I'm in tune. Let's see what these sound like. Here's my dry signal, Harley Benton HB35. I know it looks Brian May, but this is like a secret surf rock machine. It really is. I just love those single coils. All right, we'll start off with the Azor, because of course. Ah, 
Off to a strong start. Let's uh, let's dime that dwell. It has that uh, like belt and brick clickiness that was a popular sound in reverb pedals for the past couple of years. It's trying to emulate a drip with that. I mean, for 22 bucks, 23 bucks, whatever it is, I mean, it doesn't sound bad. I could work with that. Let's pull it back a bit. trail on it that little bit of belt and brick like clicky bouncy faux drip is fun <laughs> 22 bucks 23 bucks something like that i think that's fine all right on to the moo gig the reverb erg the reverb berg moo gig in your names they're tongue twisters i really liked the moo gig echoes echo Let's see how this does. Let's start it off on the room setting. Very slight. Very quiet. Well, I don't think I like that. Buries the mix. I guess it's fine for kind of like warming up your tone and putting a little splash in there. But I'm not impressed so far. Let's check out the spring setting. Oh, that sounds real digital. <laughs> That's like hilariously digital. Weird sound time. I'm gonna have to, you know, boost that artificially in post because it's super, super quiet, but that is a weird sound. It's like an attempt at a drip, but it's just very quiet and very weird. It's bubbly though. If they could make this louder, I'd probably just <laughs> have a giant hard on for that sound though. And the resulting reverb trail is so digital sounding, like really bad. Not fun digital, like bad digital. Unless you're doing something experimental with this, I don't recommend this pedal so far. Let's check out the shimmer setting. Goes on for a really long time, but like the other settings, it was, it's quiet.
unless you're hearing something in this that's exciting to you that I'm not hearing, I don't think that's the one to get. All right, on to the Eno reverb. Oh, true bypass pop there. It's got three different settings, room, spring, and well. Different colored LEDs, it looks like, for the different settings. Three other knobs, level, dry, wet, and time. We'll start on room. Immediately better than the Moog gig. a hollow tonality to it. Oh, <laughs> took it a second to figure out that I changed modes on it. That's supposed to be the, sp the spring sound. There's an interesting like delay bounce to it. It still has this like lo-fi, like filtered sound that's giving to the whole signal. This is one that was uh, 33 bucks. It doesn't sound like a spring setting to me. It sounds like some sort of like quick tile that just happens to go on for longer. It does let way more signal through than the Moogate did though, that's for sure. Let's check out the well setting. That's interesting. Let's dime everything here. Let's really hear that. Ooh. Pretty, a really interesting, kind of like bouncy, glitched out, freaky quick delay thing going on there. But that weird filtered sound, I'm not into. It is kind of taking a lot of creative license with its descriptions of the reverbs too. Room, ah. Uh, Spring, eh. well, is that what a well sounds like? I don't know. All right, on to the Most Guy Spring Reverb. This one, wait, I was wrong. This one is the, you know, that one's 33. Oh, this is also 33. Both of those are 33. All right, another simple two knobber. Let's see if it's way better than the Azor. Azor. That belt and brick, clicky, slap back sort of sound.
Not bad. Let's dime it. Let's compare it to the Azor. I'll dime the Azor too. It's not the same circuit, different tonality. I'm gonna go with the Azor, just based on its tonality. They're both doing like this click sort of thing, but the Azor has a bit of like a preamp fullness to it, where the most guy is just kind of thin and kind of hollow sounding, which might be the preferred sound you're going for. But in this exact moment right here, I'm going with the Azor. All right, on to the snake bite. <laughs> this one is compelling just because it has so many knobs. It's got six knobs to it. It's the most expensive at nearly 40 bucks, $38 off of Amazon. Let's put everything to noon. I don't know what any of these knobs do. Res, CFR, maybe center frequency? LPF, low pass filter, PRD? Is that a D or no? Pre-delay, mix and decay. All right, I think I've got it figured out. <laughs> That's lush. So res is kind of like a tone control. Let's dial it back a bit. CFR is also some kind of tone control. I'm assuming low pass filter is as well, LPF. I'll have to figure out exactly what those do. Uh, Pre-delay. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Mix, all the way up. Decay, all the way up. Is that damn G-string? This is the first one out of the bunch to do the pretty ambient thing really well.
use that one pretty versatilely. It does the ambient, big, lush thing really well. I think you'd use it as a nice, warm, kind of slap back reverb. It gives you the ability to dial in something more than just a preset like this or this. It's definitely creaming this one. This is barely even in existence. These two are fighting each other and this one stands alone. I think these three would be just fine on the affordable board. Kind of pricey, kind of pricey as well. Obviously the right price for the affordable board. Um, I'm gonna go between the Azor uh, reverb if I'm doing a surfy sound and the snake bite if I'm gonna take the affordable board to church. Like I think this in a church setting is gonna do it. I think we can see with this, you know, with reverb, this time-based effect that is kind of dependent on, you know, maybe some fancy pants, you know, kind of circuitry going on. You might have to spend a little bit more to get a good sound. I mean, 40 bucks ain't that bad in the grand scheme of things. 22 bucks is great. Let's start stacking them. Let's do a surfy sound stacked into the snake bite and then I'll start adding everything else. actually kind of nice. Kind of softens it up a bit. two together are winners. All right, let's throw in the spring reverb now. If we're gonna go full stupid, let's go full stupid. Moogig really ruins the party. for the affordable board ceremony. I've got to put the uh, the 250 back on here, the Mo Sky. I will be removing the k -Mize analog chorus. Just because I don't use chorus very much. It's nothing personal. Here. 
I think I'm, it's tough. It is tough. Let's see how they fit. I think for its versatility for now, and because I can do slapback sounds with the achoos, I think I'm gonna go snake bite. I'm gonna put the achoos before it, echoes before reverb to go full ambient. The current affordaboard. There it is, the affordaboard. Isn't it wonderful? Fuzz. Meet the snake bite. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude, nasty comments. If you're interested in any of these pedals, please use my Amazon links down below. Uh, it helps me put diapers on the table and food over my family's head. And, uh, you know, do all the other stuff that you do on YouTube. And stay grounded. Bye, everybody.